Hey guys, SGT here, and I couldn't be more excited to have on the line Pastor Lindsay Williams. Pastor Williams is the author of six books, two of which have become bestsellers, one of which is called The Energy Non-Crisis, which lays out the very strong argument that oil is abiotic. Lindsay has been a Baptist minister for 55 years, and he was invited to be the chaplain to the elite of the world for three years during the construction of the Trans-Alaskan Oil Pipeline. Pastor Williams, on behalf of the entire audience, thanks so much for joining us. Well, Sean, first of all, let me say it's a privilege to be on your show, I believe, for the first time today. So thank you very much. So, Pastor Williams, for those of us in the audience who are not familiar with you, can you tell us how you became the chaplain to the elite of the world? The way it all came about was the providence of God. I actually had been a pastor of a church in Hollywood, Florida, for 12 years. And the Lord called me to go to Alaska as a missionary when they said they were going to build the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline. They said 25,000 workers would converge on the state of Alaska to build that 800-mile, four-foot diameter pipe across the state of Alaska from America's oil field up on the Arctic Ocean. And 25,000 of the roughest, toughest, customest, drinkingest, honoriest folks on the face of the earth, I thought, well, they must need some spiritual guidance. So I went to Alaska Pipeline Service Company. That was a consortium of nine major oil companies that were going to build that pipeline. And I said, don't you need a chaplain on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline? I guess it, it worked because I kept going back and back and back, and finally persistence paid off. And they said, okay, you just go up to Prudhoe Bay and see what you can do. Well, I did. I'm quite sure they thought I'd last a matter of days. Instead, six months later, I was still there, and they said, we would like to invite you to sit in on our board meetings in an advisory capacity to help the relationship between management and labor. Sean, I had not the slightest idea what I was getting into, and for three years' time, I sat across the dinner table from, lived in the same dorms with, sat in the board meetings with the people that you hear about in the World Bank and the IMF and the top oil company officials of the world. And let me be very honest with your audience today, Sean, and that is I believe that God put me in that position many years ago so that I could be on your program today. It's only because of knowing the elite. Everything I get comes from the elite. The elite themselves who sat and planned all of this behind closed doors. There are two of those individuals that became very personal friends of mine, and over these past 35 years, they have told me things, and I have merely gone on radio talk shows and, and shows like yours and relayed what I have heard. And Sean, what I have heard startles me to no end of what the elite are planning on doing, Sean. Pastor Williams, we know that you've been traveling for the last three weeks, so you probably have a lot of news to share. Uh, Jim Sinclair is saying that there is no fixing what's happening now. The problem is here. The problem is now. It's not tomorrow. It's right as we're talking. It's it's right as you're listening that this has come to a head and it can explode. Sir, in the past, you've said that your sources have told you that the euro will collapse before the dollar. And when it does, folks will have just a couple of weeks to get out of all paper assets because then the dollar will fall next. So we have so much to talk about. Well, let me begin by what one of these elites said to me. Now, my book, Energy Non-Crisis, there's a person in the Energy Non-Crisis called Mr. X. It's actually a combination of two individuals. There were two of them who, over these past 35 years, have kept in touch with me on a regular basis. One of these individuals passed away. He was 88 years of age, if I remember correctly. That was Mr. Fromm, and correct? Mr. Fromm? Yes, that's Mr. Fromm. We can actually use his name now. Many people wondered for years. Let me begin by what this gentleman told me just before he passed away. We were on the phone one day, and he said, Chaplain Williams, I'm too old to care. He said, it really doesn't matter anymore. He said, just go ahead and tell the world everything. Well, Sean, I've done exactly that. I've talked about things that these people have told me that have never been talked about before. Oh, by the way, the second Mr. X of my book, Energy and On Crisis, this gentleman is still alive. He's been retired from Atlantic Ridgefield for many years, but he still knows everything that goes on behind closed doors. Just yesterday, I spent about a 45-minute conversation with him and shown some of the things he told me. I still sit here utterly amazed because we're seeing so many critical things take place, as you just mentioned a moment ago. So first of all, uh, let me begin by saying that this individual told me all of the things that you've seen take place in the Middle East. 
Now, many of you remember that the first crisis was in Egypt, and then it spread to Libya, and then it went from there to the other Middle East countries, into Yemen and Oman, and now it's going up into Jordan and Syria. And, and this man told me exactly why they were doing it, uh, where it was going to be, and I came on radio talk shows before there was, there was a crisis of any kind in the Middle East. And I said that I had been told that within the next four to five months there was going to be a crisis in the Middle East. So let me say where it's going from this point. I know you are going to see, well, first of all, there's Egypt. And did you notice that as of this past week, the Muslim Brotherhood Party actually became legal in the country of Egypt. Now, I was given this back about four to five months ago, and I predicted it on numbers of radio talk shows and said that every one of these countries, as the royal families in the countries fall, all their leaders fall, that we, that's right, the elite, the, the government of the United States of America, Mrs. Clinton, of course, being right up there at the very top of all of this, along with uh, her husband, and it, it was told to me that we were going to give, I hope you're hearing this, folks, that we were going to give each of these countries to the Muslim Brotherhood as soon as they fell. And it was announced for the first time this past week. Many of you probably saw it on the national news, and they said, Brotherhood Party legal in Egypt for the first time. And I sat here, and I was in amazement, because this was planned over two years ago, I was told it six months before it happened, and I'm saying to you now, Libya, as soon as Gaddafi falls, they're going to give the whole country to the Muslim Brotherhood. Yemen, as, say, as, you, as soon as everything is completed in Yemen, uh, and it's just a matter of time now because you know what's happened over there, uh, it's going to be given to the Muslim Brotherhood. You're going to see Jordan and Syria right on the heels of Yemen. Watch out. Keep very close touch. Everybody in your audience, please keep close touch as to what happens in Saudi Arabia, because that is going to be the last country that the royal family will fall, and they're doing this intentionally because that's where America gets most of their crude oil from, and they're holding it until last so that the American people will not rise up in arms too quickly. Oh, this is so insidious, what's taking place out there right now, uh, until I'm even startled myself as, as I consider the predictions that these people gave to me as to how they're going to do it. The royal family in Saudi Arabia is going to fall. And when that begins to happen there, you are going to see gas prices, crude oil prices go 150 to 200 dollars a barrel. You go see gasoline at the gas pump goes to six, seven, eight dollars a gallon. You're going to see the American dollar collapse very rapidly. And every bit of this is a sequel of events that was planned over two years ago. I know some of you think right now that gold and silver prices, and you're scared to death of where they're going. Don't worry. I know that silver prices went down, uh, gold prices went down a little bit. Uh, don't don't even consider it. Don't even give a thought to it, because it, it, they're doing this intentionally. The elite are are, pa are are padding their pockets with gold and silver. This is their currency, and it is going to go up. Gold is going to go to three thousand dollars an ounce at least. Don't you dare go out there and sell the gold and silver you've got because they're trying to trick you into doing it right now. I'm begging people everywhere to make preparations because it is the only thing that's going to have any value whatsoever. After everything else, the real estate market has collapsed. You, you're not making money on your houses anymore. The dollar is collapsing. The Federal Reserve note is a has-been. Are you ready? I, I'm going to make a, a very bold statement here, and you'll watch it take place. I do not know the date. All I know is it's going to happen. America will default on its national debt. I hope you heard that. Uh, it was predicted to me about a year and a half ago that uh, the elite were going to do this. Uh, the national debt will get to the place where the dollar uh, will lose so much of its value, 
and our T-bills, our national debt, not, not, not just this raising of the debt ceiling limit. This is not what I'm talking about. That's a minor thing compared to what's going to happen when the Federal Reserve actually declares a default on the $14 trillion-plus American debt. It is going to happen, mark my words, and when it does, you will basically see what the elite have been trying to do since today they announced the New World Order. You will see the elite be able to, for all practical purposes, own every piece of mortgaged anything in the United States of America. They'll, they'll own your house if it's mortgaged. They'll own commercial real estate if it's mortgaged. They'll own your automobile if it's mortgaged because you won't be able to make your payment. And it, it, this is their goal. They want this. It is not about money. I've tried to tell people this for 35 years. What the elite do is not about money. It, it, some of the people that I rubbed shoulders with when I was on the trans Alaska oil pipeline and sat across the dinner table from, they could have written a check for a million dollars a day for the rest of their life and never spent their fortunes. That's not what it's all about. That's part of it, yes. But that is minor compared to the real thing. The, the, the desire of the elite is control. I'll say it again, as I've said it thousands of times probably, over many radio shows, the name of the game is control. They want control, total control of nations. They want total control of the, the monetary system of that country. They want control of people and whatever it takes for the new world order to bring about a total control factor. The Middle East is all about control. What's, hap what's going to happen to the dollar is all about control. Because when you don't have a currency worth enough to be able to go to the grocery store and buy a loaf of bread without taking a wheelbarrow load of it there to do it with, you will beg for a new world order currency. And the Federal Reserve, the World Bank, of which it looks like Mrs. Clinton is going to become the head. Correct. Oh, Correct. it scares the daylights out Correct. of me. Every bit of this is a matter of control of people and nations and currencies, and you will beg the New World Order, the World Bank, the IMF, you will beg them for a new currency so that you can feed your children who are crying, and they will gladly step up to the plates and say, we will be your savior. We have a new currency. It is going to be backed by gold and silver so that you can depend on it having some value. Folks, are you getting the message? Don't you dare go out there and sell that gold and silver that you bought back a few years ago when, when you could still afford it 